Good afternoon, Stock Charts TV and YouTube watchers all over the world. Alex and I are here together, together. in person, three dimensions, in Washington, D.C. at the 49th Annual CMT Symposium. Uh, it's a little late, Alex. Yeah, we had a good evening, a good networking event and on the rooftop. On the rooftop of on Hotel rooftop, Zenith. And it was just nice to see everybody. Really nice to be back in person. A lot of unsolicited hugs going around, people who have, uh, you know, had a long couple of years without seeing their colleagues and friends. And uh, so it was great to be back in person. Conference starts very early tomorrow morning. Uh, really excited for John Bollinger's kickoff and Jim yeah. Bianco. But of course, tonight we are bringing you a little bit of go, no go analysis for this sloppy, choppy a little bit heavy market. Uh, yeah. So, Alex, let's yeah. let's dive right into uh, to some charts. Let's look at a uh, a go no go heat map. If we were going to look just at the trend, and remember, for those of you who haven't been watching this show every week, the trend colors identify that composite blend of technical indicators, sort of the weight of the evidence. Remember, blue and aqua; these are strong go trends. Amber is our neutral color, and then pink and purple give us the lighter and heavier waiting for a strong downtrend. So Alex, walk us through this uh, gonna go heat map. Well, the big change this week is the equity market rolling over into the no-go trend. So we had some amber go fish bars last week, but this week we saw the pink bars of a no-go followed up with a really strong purple no-go bar to end the week. So that's the big change. Uh, treasury bond prices are still in a no-go. They weakened a little bit. Uh, commodities still in a strong go. Dollar strengthened again, went up, up again, again uh, made new highs, and Bitcoin is, is struggling as well. But the big change, I think, really is that equity market rolling over into a no-go trend. Really uh, heavy down day Thursday, closed the week Friday. Uh, really kind of inexplicable to most analysts mm -hmm. exactly what the single catalyst was. Uh, we're going to hear this, this whole week at the conference a lot of discussion about rising rates, a rising dollar, yeah. and higher oil. Uh, that's a that's a bad trifecta for equities and risk assets generally. Yeah, absolutely. So Alex, if we were to move along from just the asset class map, let's let's talk specifically about the S&P 500, the SPY, uh, the ETF ticker for the US large cap index. Uh, and again, yeah. talking through that really heavy day on Thursday last week, follow through on Friday. And of course, we uh, we picked up this week in that stronger no-go uh, trend condition. Yeah, I mean, we, we entered the no-go at the beginning of the week and we've just fallen ever since and finished the week making those strong purple no-go bars. And if you notice, we're fairly close to these prior lows yep. uh, from a couple of months ago. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens here. Gonna go oscillator is well into negative territory on heavy volume, actually becoming oversold at this point. Yep. Um, we saw that uh, break below the zero line gave us a little bit of warning while we were painting those amber uh, amber go fish bars before we hit the no go. But not a good week, and we're at lows from a couple of months ago. So, Alex, just as a refresher, that zero line in the mm. Gonogo oscillator, that's one of the most powerful pieces, I yeah. believe, in the Gonogo charts uh, ecosystem. Talk to us a little bit about uh, what it means to be below zero yeah. in the oscillator. Well, so momentum analysis is so powerful. And what we found is, is that when all the inputs to the Gonogo oscillator are in their neutral territory, the oscillator will hit the zero line. So if we're in a go trend, mm -hmm. we would expect the zero line to act as support because we will rally in a go trend, we will get overbought, and then we will cool off and come back into neutral territory. So every time it does that, we would expect support to be found at the zero line. When it isn't able to find support at zero, that's a real concern for the for the trend that it's in. And so in this case, we were trying to uh, establish a go trend. And when that support wasn't found at the zero line, that was a real sort of uh, a concern for the fact that there was a little bit of weakness in that go trend. And then, of course, it followed up with painting no go bars, as you can see. Absolutely. Momentum being a confirming indicator of what we're seeing in the price action and from a trend perspective. We want to consider that trend, understand momentum. Of course, we're looking as well at volume and volatility. And yeah. those four pieces really bring the entire go-no-go -go charts uh, system together. Alex, let's let's switch away from uh, large cap equities and take a look at what's happening in the interest rate environment. TNX being the 10-year treasury yield. Uh, we've talked about this on the show for weeks now, as have yeah. many, many analysts. Uh, in fact, over coffee this morning with, uh, with a CMT colleague, discussing how uh, you know, I was born in 1981, and that was the peak of the bond market. 
literally everyone who is in the financial services industry today has not traded through a rising interest rate environment. The long-term downtrend uh, for rates has, has really been dominant for 40 years. Uh, and so if we look at a quarterly chart, uh, as we have in weeks prior, we're starting to see the break of that downtrend line not on go uh, no go bars, but back into an amber yeah. condition. Yeah. And this is what you're talking about. This is historical low trend uh, rate environment. We, we, you know, my parents talk about buying a house at 14, 15 percent interest rates. And we right. just haven't seen that in decades. And so this is really, really interesting at the moment because we are testing this downward sloping resistance line. And in fact, if we close the quarter where we are right now, we'll actually be above that resistance line yep. on amber go fish bars. So this has been in place for a long, long time. And the fact that we just sort of created to this low uh, a few pandemic. years ago through the pandemic, we've really rallied only back to that, that, that line. And so we're still in this historically low interest rate environment, but we're seeing a rising rate situation that we haven't seen uh, probably since, what, the 80s? And nope. so we're now back testing that line. And if we close where we close now, we're actually going to be above that line. So really, really significant in terms of the rate environment. Yeah. Uh, right now we're, we're coming into May, last week of April. Uh, we have through June to see where uh, yep. rates end up on this quarterly chart. Uh, but I tell you, Alex, when I see a chart like that, it, it makes me think I need a little sip of that old fashioned uh, leftovers from happy hour tonight. <laughs> It's tough. It's a tough market out there. <laughs> it certainly is. And on the daily chart, yeah, you know, you can see how strong that go trend is, right? We've we've been in this uh, rising rate environment for some time. Uh, analysts everywhere talking about how the Fed is talking about rising rates more quickly. Mm -hmm. um, we saw it come right up to to these highs here. Um, come off a little bit this week, but we're still clearly above that line. This is that long term resistance line that was on from the quarterly chart. So gotcha. we're still above that. Uh, you might want to note the oscillator yep. down here at the zero line. We will look to see if this finds support. If this finds support, we'll expect prices to remain in this go trend and potentially make new highs. Mm -hmm. And if we break through that zero line, right? We, as investors, we want to keep an open mind to both outcomes. Yep. Yep. Alex and I cannot forecast the future for you. I'm sorry. Anybody who tells you they can, <laughs> you should run the other way. Uh, so, Alex, let's talk about what the, what's the scenario if we uh, if we stick with this long term downtrend in, in rates. What would you need to see on the chart to tell you that this uh, shorter term daily trend is over? Yeah. So the first thing we'd look at is the oscillator and the zero line. If we break below the zero line, then that is a threat to the go trend that we see in price. Mm -hmm. We know that in a strong go trend, we will see overbought situation and we'll see a cooling off into neutral territory. Yep. We shouldn't see any oversold conditions if we're in a, a healthy go trend, go trend. Yep. right? So whenever the oscillator breaks below zero, that'll indicate that at the very least, there'll be a more significant correction. Yeah. You know, the last time that happened back here, it led to just a slightly uh, longer correction before the go trend resumed its course. So we're going to be looking at that. But if it does break below zero, that would be the first sign that perhaps uh, this go trend is going to be threatened. And But when you line that up with the fact that on the quarterly chart, we're right at that resistance line. Yeah. Um, that's very strong resistance. So if we end up closing back below this line, mm -hmm. um, then in the context of that historical downtrend, then we might be back in that sort of, uh, you know, longer term downtrend. But we'll we'll look for the zero line to give us a clue. And if we find support here, then the go trend in price on a daily chart is likely to continue. Fantastic. Thank you, Alex. And so uh, it's springtime. Shorts are out. Shorts are working. Let's uh, let's yep. check in on the XLK, the technology sector. And really, uh, all of growth equities, those that have yeah. uh, large multiples that are harder to justify in a rising rate environment, have really been beaten down. And I think a lot of investors have been maybe caught off sides a little bit, or even because of their mandate, they haven't been able to exit these positions uh, quickly. Yeah. There's still a lot yeah. of uh, a, a lot of funds to flow out of uh, of growth equities. So. Yeah. From the, from the perspective of go-no-go -no -go charts, what are we seeing in the trend yeah. of the technology sector? Well, and you and I both talk to people that are still holding technology stocks, right? So, you know, it was the darling of the markets for the last couple of years. And mm -hmm. this, this year to date really hasn't been the case. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the daily chart, the XLK, we can see that it's really broken down more significantly than the S&P itself. Mm -hmm. And we're testing these prior lows and, in fact, slightly at lower lows than we were 
earlier in the chart. Strong no-go trend in place. Mm -hmm. The oscillator broke below the zero line some bars back, you know, a couple yeah. of weeks ago. And now we're oversold with, with heavy volume. With heavy volume. So on the XLK, the picture is pretty bleak. And these are the growth equities. Remember, with the S&P, uh, it's made up of mostly large cap growth stocks. Right. As a cap weighted index, uh, technology makes up a very large portion of the market. Uh, and, and actually, when I was listening to a uh, Twitter space with George Noble, he had Chris Verona on earlier this week. And uh, if you look back 30 years, it was energy that made up the largest portion of the S&P 500 because it's a cap weighted index. And so obviously, uh, you know, uh, the seasons do change. Uh, but well, we've been looking at this on an absolute basis, Alex. Let, why don't we take a look at a relative basis, how the XLK is stacked up against the S&P 500, uh, just looking at the ratio of the sectors to the index. If we take a look at a go-no-go -go, uh, rel map, relative strength heat map, we can see what's leading and what's yeah, lagging. It's, uh, it's an interesting point you make there with talking about how the energy uh, space used to be the driver of the, the S&P 500. We used to... We used to watch the largest company in the S&P flicker between ExxonMobil and Apple for the longest time. Exactly. And then that was just in the dust then. ExxonMobil right. left behind and technology stocks really took over. But for a while it was it was sort of that sort of battle between the, the biggest energy stock and Apple. But mm -hmm. if we look at the sector map here, the realm map, uh, you can see that really nothing has changed this week. Mm -hmm. Technology in the top panel in a strong no-go on a relative basis to the S&P. Mm -hmm. Communications, another growth sector in a strong no-go relative to the S&P. And financials, which have really underperformed. Mm -hmm. uh, surprising some with the rising rate environment, but yep. you know there's a lot of debate about how a rising rate environment affects the banks. Yep. Um, and so those are, the, those are the securities or the uh, sectors, I should say, that are underperforming. Where the strength comes in is still in the same place. We still see strength in energy. Mm -hmm. We see strength in materials, healthcare, staples, utilities, and real estate. So it's mm -hmm. still a defensive picture when you're looking at the sectors and Absolutely. their performance. Defense on the field. And uh, again, when we're thinking about a relative strength chart, it doesn't mean that the absolute trend of all of those uh, strong right. sectors is up necessarily. It does mean that they are performing better than the index, yeah. as in going down more slowly, yeah. uh, which is yeah. uh, doing less badly. Doing right? less this is a bad badly. week for everybody. Absolutely. Yeah. A lot of the portfolio managers that Alex and I work with are, are uh, measured based on a relative benchmark. How did they do against the S&P 500? And for clients, they're looking to outperform the index. So if, uh, if we're headed for bear territory, they're going to look to these defensive sectors uh, to make their losses as small as yeah, possible. And plenty of clients have to be invested in equities, right? That's Correct. part of their mandate. So if you Correct. have to be in equities, being down 2% rather than being down 5% yeah. is going to be uh, beating the benchmark. So let's move on and let's look at a, an individual security within the uh, uh, technology and communications sectors. Let's take a look first at Sony Music Group. Uh, why don't we start on a weekly basis just to get a longer term perspective on, on where we've come from with Sony. Yeah, so Sony is really not looking good. Um, we've broken down and this is why we love these charts, right? Because you can get a sense of the trend. The trend is a no-go, and that's that blend of uh, trend-following concepts mm -hmm. telling us that everything is stacked up telling to give us a no-go trend. Mm -hmm. But we can also see that we've broken below significant support here. Mm -hmm. um, and we know that when support is broken, it tends to become resistant. So if we were to retest this, we would expect it to be resistant. Mm -hmm. But we've broken below an area on the chart where there was some support. Mm -hmm. um, we've fallen through that. Um, we can do all kinds of price projection and sort of look at the, the distance from the high here to this level and project that down. Mm -hmm. But what we do know is a no-go is in place. We've broken below support. Mm -hmm. Going to go oscillators in negative territory and at the moment oversold. So not a good picture on a weekly basis for Sony. Fascinating to see that uh, the oscillator, which was in extreme oversold territory, mm -hmm. as we approached that area of potential support for Sony, uh, rallied right up to the zero line. Yep. So you, you did have a little uh, tug of war between buyers and sellers at that zero line. But of course, uh, sellers overpowered and downside continued. We're in a strong yep. no-go trend for Sony. And that's the weekly basis. What if we dive into the daily just to see a little closer look uh, at, at where uh, where that trend is going? And if if playing to the short side is part of your discipline, then obviously uh, these short ideas are really powerful as the trends continue directly through areas of support. Yeah. So on the daily chart, you're just seeing strong no-go 
momentum to the downside, heavy volume as the oscillator is in uh, negative territory. And really most of the time here in oversold territory hasn't really got off the floor mm -hmm. um, as we make these new lows in price. So you could certainly be playing the short side, dive down another time frame even and look for opportunities to get into that trade. Now, Alex, uh, when we are in a go trend, we see those little green circles mm. as trend continuation icons. So a visual cue, the momentum has come back in the direction of the trend. When we're in the reverse, right. when we're in a no-go trend, uh, talk to us a little bit about those red circles. Where, how yeah. are those firing? So they're still trend continuation icons, uh, but when in a no-go, they're going to be red, telling us that it's a low, relatively low-risk opportunity to partake in the trend that's in place, which is in this case a no-go trend, right? And when that happens, it's because we're in a no-go trend. Mm -hmm. The oscillator has found itself testing that zero line from below and being turned away. And when that happens, uh, what we're seeing is that momentum is now again in the direction of the no-go trend, a resurgence in momentum in the direction of the trend that's in place, which is uh, to the downside. So these red circles in a no-go trend are opportunities perhaps to partake in that move to the downside. And we saw another one here after this sort of choppy inability for the gonna go trend to maintain a color. Mm -hmm. When it really does crash back through the zero line, we see that trend continuation icon, this time a no-go trend continuation icon, and then we see new lows in price. Absolutely. So now we know where the shorts are, are taking place, how we might trade to the short side. Let's uh, let's took a, take a look at some of those defensive sectors like mm -hmm. utilities, perhaps not the, uh, the, the the flashiest of sectors in the S&P 500 for investors, but certainly a safe haven when uh, when markets are in this kind of choppy and drawn down area. If we're looking at a daily chart of the utilities sector, uh, what what jumps out at you, Alex? Well, what jumps out at me is that it's still in a go trend. <laughs> it's still right? in a go trend. So you know, you you compare that to what we're seeing in t in some of the growth sectors. You compare it to what we're seeing in the S and P, mm -hmm. um, and it is it's still in a go trend. Now it is weakening, and the oscillator dangerously is below the zero line on heavy volume. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot to be concerned about. But relatively speaking, uh, we are in a go trend, and we are higher than we've been in the past. If we find any kind of support here, we're making a higher low. Mm -hmm. um, so it looks a lot different from what we saw in the S&P and in the technology sector. But, uh, you know, there's weakness throughout there's weakness this market. throughout the market, right? And when, when markets really, really tank, then, uh, you know, we see everything move together to an extent. So we're going to be looking at this. This is a real worry. Uh, we'll see what happens, but still in a go trend, relatively speaking, a stronger picture than the S&P. I think it was John Kennedy who said a rising tide lifts all ships. ships. And I think it was John Bollinger who said, and when the tide goes out, you find out who's been swimming without uh, trunks on. <laughs> so uh, certainly uh, when the markets get washed out, we... Uh, we and we then there's see. also smooth seas, never a sailor made, right? So you That's know, right. These, these markets test us, but That's right. if we can figure out a way to navigate them, then we'll be better for it. Fantastic. Uh, let's take a look at one of the uh, one of the daily ideas. Uh, I know this is uh, this is going to be an example of when the market reverses. Yes. And so uh, let's pull up UGI. First, uh, let's just take a look on the daily basis. Uh, this one out to uh, go to go chart subscribers uh, uh, at that new go looked like a, a pretty nice bottom taking place oscillator back above zero breaking out of a max squeeze to the upside as we formed a new go trend. And of course, uh, not knowing what the future holds, right? We've got uh, the, the weight of the evidence on our side. This new trend is to continue. And uh, here and it, we see a, a strong reversal. And it didn't. And it didn't. It didn't. That happens. Uh, you know, and we love this kind of chart, though, because it, it, it allows us to uh, be confident that if things don't play out the way we expect them to, we'll be told by the charts and we'll be able to get out or make decisions um, to reverse our positions. And so this is a real case of, you know, this looked great to me. Mm -hmm. We have a new trend in place. We know that the utility sector is outperforming the market. Yep. Um, we were at zero here on the oscillator. We were expecting support because we've, we've got this, this horizontal line here, which has been support in the past. It's been resistance in the past. We expected to find support. Guess what? It wasn't support. We get a uh, color change on the oscillate, on the trend indicator, mm -hmm. and then we go to amber and then to no go. And you always talk about the four trades, right? right. The four scenarios, big win, big loss, mm -hmm. small win, small loss. And it's mm -hmm. the big loss that we can't 
we can't deal with. We don't want to deal with that big loss, and this helps us get out. That's right. Cutting losses short is critical to a long-term success in the in the trading business. But we also talk in in a lot of our longer presentations about you know percentage of winning trades. That's yeah. that's one important thing to focus on. The other thing is the profit ratio per trade. So we want to use go-no-go -no -go charts for both, meaning we want to see the weight of the evidence on our side, that new go trend, the oscillator, uh, finding some support at zero, breaking out of a max squeeze. These are all indications of a new go trend. So we want to place a trade. We also want to carefully and responsibly manage risk. So of those four outcomes, a small loss is not a problem. And we've got very clearly defined risk at at our entry point. Uh, so when that reverses, uh, we know we can get out quickly. This is going to happen. And so having a good trading discipline, having charts that are simple, that remove that analysis paralysis, we don't want to uh, we don't want to turn our trades into investments and right. hold on to this all the way through yeah, the floor. I was just going to mention that we, we talk about turn trades becoming investments. And this is one where, you know, if I didn't have this setup or the, the tools in front of me, I really wanted this one to work out. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like it looks good. We've got higher lows. We've seemed like we've made a bottom. We've got oscillator breaking above zero. We've got support at zero, breakout of max squeezes. Mm -hmm. So I really wanted this one to work out. Yeah. In the right and, sector. And it didn't. And yeah. so, but I can't argue with it because it's now a no go, right? So exactly. I think you have to make sure that you remove that subjectivity, mm -hmm. give yourself the objective nature of some sort of process. Right. And, and when we see that, we can get out quickly. You know, talking to a lot of the folks at uh, William O'Neill and company who talk a lot about their trading discipline, you know, when, when the markets are like this, they're taking smaller positions, they're really controlling their risk and, and really taking fewer trades until the market starts working towards their advantage. Alex, as we wrap up tonight's show, I wanted to ask for one more chart. Yep. Uh, I'm a human being. I read the news. I can't help it. Uh, can you pull up a chart of Twitter? Uh, and everybody and their brother has been talking about uh, Elon's takeover of the business. We'll see if that all goes through. Certainly seems uh, seems likely as the board accepting uh, his offer at fifty two bucks a share uh, or fifty four twenty. Excuse me. Uh, let's. What do you see from a trend perspective uh, for the chart of Twitter? Well, it's interesting because we saw this uh, on the go no go chart become a go trend several weeks ago before the gap. This was the day, I think, where he talked about uh, That's making he the purchase. Or, or bought 9.3%. He bought 9.3%, yeah. Started to create a stake. And, yeah. and it gapped up hugely, right? So now we also know that gaps tend to be support if, you're, if you've gapped up. Mm -hmm. uh, we expect that to be support. We look towards the oscillator as it approaches zero on heavy volume. It's found support here. The, the trend has remained in place. We saw a little bit of weakness before strengthening back to bright blue go bars. Mm -hmm. And we've seen a couple now of go trend continuation icons as the oscillator to find support in the zero line. So it was a really strong no go correction that it was in. Mm -hmm. But we saw that trend reverse um, you know, a little while ago um, when the oscillator broke above zero, the go trend colors took hold mm -hmm. and then we gapped up. We're retesting the support at that gap. And now we're getting some go trend continuation icons, potentially setting up for a move to a new highs. You know, absolutely, potentially setting up to uh, take this company private. <laughs> so, from all of us here in Washington D.C. at the CMT Association Symposium, really appreciate everybody who's watching. If you're on YouTube, make sure to also check out StockChartsTV.com or uh, download the app wherever you grab your apps. Make sure you tune in every week to watch the Go No Go Show Thursdays at 3:30 p.m. Alex, uh, who's who's uh, your favorite speaker at this year's symposium? What are you looking forward to? I, I, I can't look past John Bollinger kicking it off in the morning. It's going to be great to see him start the conference off. And it's just nice to be here in person and see everybody for the first time in several years. Absolutely. I think yeah. for me, it's got to be the, uh, the closing session on Friday oh, right. afternoon. <laughs> Uh, that one's going to feel really good, but also of course, because we've got of course, the, the session I'm looking forward to the most is your <laughs> session. I, I'm sorry. We should have scripted this better. <laughs> it's your fill the gap session at the end of it. I'm actually, uh, I'm going to let Dave uh, handle that on his own, but uh, oh, the okay, last okay. session of the conference will include speakers from all over the world. So we're going to look yeah. X us, uh, talk to some folks from Japan, from India, uh, from Latin America, and also from Europe. Um, and that's really the, the benefit for Alex and I being a, a close part of the CMT Association all these years. There's just so much to learn mm -hmm. from folks who've uh, who've been managing money through multiple market cycles and around the globe. So uh, we'll be back next week. Share more of those takeaways and insights. Uh, thank you all for being with us, and we'll see you next week. Cheers.
Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.